We're going to look at a very familiar verse this morning. I'm pretty sure we've all read this maybe in passing. Um, I have to give this and share this with you. When my daughter Rachel went to college, I gave her that verse. I gave her that one in Joshua 1 9. And actually, I gave her Joshua 1 6 through 9 um, to, to lean on. And I said, this is the best I can do. I give you the word of God and hopefully you can make it through. She made it out all right. So when this little one right here, a senior, and I, and I say this to the, all the children, think about what's happening. Dawson's going to sixth grade. She's transitioning to middle school. That's a big jump from the elementary school. Um, Aiden's going to 10th grade. You're now vested in high school. You're in the middle part of high school. Reagan, you're leaving middle going to high school. That's another big transition. Middle school, high school is not middle school. The teachers in middle school cared a little about you. They, they loved on you a little bit. You get to high school and teachers don't want to even know your name. I hate to say that, but that's how they act. If, if you find a teacher that looks at you and does care about you, awesome. And then, Sasha, you on the cusp of getting ready to step out into life, into the deep end, as I would say, the deep end of the pool. No more water wings. You out there swimming on the deep end with the sharks and all that fun stuff. It's called life. So, you know, all the adults in the room, you've lived it, you've done it. Lean on those kids and tell them. And kids, this is where you have wisdom. Listen to your elders. The Bible says it shall go for well with you and you shall have, watch this, long life. With that being said, having rise to your feet, go ahead and show the scripture. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Please be seated and pray with me now. Lord, as we move forward into the school year and move forward in life to another day, let us not lean on our own understanding. We think we know it all. And in God's eyes and your eyes, Father God, we know nothing. We are but a speck. We are but dust. We are but whispers in the wind compared to your all-knowing knowledge and omnipresence and omniscience and all your omnipotence. Everything about you that is great and awesome. But Father God, if we're smart, we'll lean on you for everything. We'll truly know you for everything and truly trust you for everything. The hard part in life is that we don't want to do that. We want to hold on to our hold on to our wisdom and think it's the right thing to do. But the foolish man will fail at all he does when he thinks it's all done by him. Father God, I pray that the persons that are out here today that don't know you for salvation or forgiveness of their sins be wise today. Come and know you for forgiveness of their sins. Come to know you as their Lord and Savior. For those of the, out there who don't that don't really know you, Lord, but they want to get to know you better, but confess to be a Christian, convict their hearts today, Lord. Touch them. Change them. Move them in a way closer to you. I know for a fact that you have ways to make us move closer to the cross. Trust and believe that's one thing I do know personal experience, that you make a person come closer to you, draw nearer to you, because of the tests and trials that you put them through. Just ask Job. Father God, I pray in advance for that whosoever and bless us with the whosoever that want to come down and give their life to Christ. Father God, strengthen me where I'm weak, build me up where I'm torn down, let my congregation hear, hear and see you. It is in my name of Jesus I pray in the church. And amen. Amen. Reading that verse again. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I like to speak from the thought this morning. Do I really trust the Lord? Do I really trust the Lord? Turn and smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh my neighbor, do you trust me? <laughs> That's a good question. Anybody ever heard of the term trust fall? It's an exercise for team and relationship building. The idea is to instill trust in team members to rely on one another, build teamwork, and trust in the workplace. You see, Ms. Carol, for couples, 
and people in a relationship where trust has been, may have been betrayed, the purpose there is to rebuild and reestablish trust where it has been broken. When it is done correctly, Mike, people learn to trust one another when they are most vulnerable, when they have their backs turned to them. You see, you lean back. Go ahead and throw that first slide up. You lean back and fall into the arms of a person who may have betrayed you, or in this case, if it's a trust fall, where it's a co-worker. That's why it's called a trust fall. You are the most vulnerable because you're leaning back, trusting that they'll catch you. My daughter Sasha has a shirt that says the following. If you fall, I'll catch you. Love the floor. And it's the idea that if you don't trust it, it's going to catch you before. But the Lord has demonstrated to us that he'll always have our backs and will catch us when we fall. Just pretend that gentleman catching that guy is the Lord and the guy falling backwards is you. From the Garden of Eden to Israel's constant falling away to idol worship and even ourselves, our own stumbling and falling down because of our sins, because of our pride, we can't get back up. God God has always had our backs when we have fallen. How do I know? I'm glad you ask intelligent questions, my congregation. Look behind me and you see the greatest example of how God has cared for us and never let us down. It's the cross. You see, Romans chapter 5 says, when we were enemies with God, he sent his own son to die on the cross to save us from our sins. The Bible goes on to say that Jesus became sin so that we could have the righteousness of God. You see, Vanessa, if, it's, if God's not having your back, if God's not catching you, then who is? You see, so this morning, we're going to look at a very familiar verse from Proverbs that explains why we need to trust in the Lord. If you would, please go ahead and put the scripture back up. Thank you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. And this is where I'd like to give you three for the Trinity to the glory of God. We see my first point. When you really trust the Lord, it's because of your relationship with him. It's because of your relationship with him. It's seen in your dedication to him and your self-denial and your self-denial. Friends, it's that relationship part. You have a relationship, you know you can lean back and trust the Lord and he'll catch you. And here's the funny part. Even when we're out of order with God, I'll use David as an example. When King David was out of order with God, he had done all those sins and done all those things wrong. God still had his back and caught him. But let's start from the beginning. How is your relationship with the Lord? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? These are critical things we need to know. You may have a mediocre relationship. You know God, maybe, sometimes, I don't know. Or you don't know Him because you don't trust Him. Or you never heard of Him. But let's keep it real. There may be some people here in the church this morning that say they're a Christian, but are not. There are three types of people. Those who don't know the Lord. Those who say they know the Lord, but don't really have a relationship with Him. And the last, those who intimately know Him because they're close to Him and lean on Him. For example, my deacons, Randy and Richard and Jim. These gentlemen are men of our character and integrity and demonstrate daily what being a man of God is. They're not perfect, but they are pursuing perfection in Christ. I've broken bread with them, spent time with them, discussed various topics that we agree on and disagree. I trust them. But a guy named Joe down the block, I don't know him. I may have heard about him only from details from people who know him, maybe even the news. But I don't know him because I never spent time with him or talk with him. But I know about him. 
That's how some people are in their relationship with God. They heard about him on, from Sunday school, maybe in church, but never spent time getting to know God or trust in him. Friends, let me be clear about one thing. If you want to get to know somebody, just live with them for a little while. When I was a Marine in the barracks, you got to know how people are in the barracks with other Marines because you live with them. But husbands and wives, wives share a special relationship where they know one another because of their close, close, close time together. You see, my wife knows my free, free favorite vegetables. Pizza, fried chicken, and steak. She knows this because we have a close relationship. In order to know someone, you have to spend time with them. And if you don't spend time with them, you don't know how to learn to lean on them and trust them. Look at the text again. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You learn to trust the Lord first by reading, studying his word, and applying God's word to your life. I'm going to say that last part again. By reading, studying his word, and applying God's word to your life. Meaning, you read that word, you study that word, and then you apply it. Like anything, like medication, like instructions in a manual in a book. If you don't put that one piece where it belongs, that item that you put together is going to fall apart. I like to do it this way. If you, I, I like watching NASCAR. When those guys go into the pull-in and they get gassed up, if they don't put those bolts on the tires just right, the wheels wiggle, 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 and they'll either have to come back in or they'll wreck. You got to apply what you learn. Put the wheels on right, apply what you learn, and then drive. Same thing with God's word. You see, trusting in God's word in every circumstance and situation in your life. You didn't learn math by sleeping on a couch. You had to go to class. You didn't learn how to shoot a rifle by looking down the barrel and pulling the trigger. You learned how to fish by someone showing you how to put the bait on the hook, how to cast your line, and then sit patiently waiting for the fish to bite. You learn by following instructions that dealt with a situation that you were in from another person maybe who may have gone through the same experience that you're going through. God's word will do the following. It will train you up, love you up, and keep you up when you're living in this mean old world dealing with rough and ugly things in life. Trust and believe that. It took Abraham 25 years to truly trust God before he was blessed with Isaac. But through every test and trial Abe went through, he learned to trust in God more and more and more. Our good friend Job said it best. Though he slay me, I will trust him. You see, Miss Yvonne, it's that close relationship you have with them, that intimate personal relationship you get when you live life trusting in God like you have. And parents, Trish, Kevin, Crystal, Mary, Julie, keep telling them. Keep reminding, keep telling your children about the goodness of the Lord. That's how they start to gain their trust by seeing how you trust in him. They see your example. They see how you live. They want to depend on God. They see the goodness of God in you. Look at the dedication of verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. What does all mean? Once again, it means total, completely, wholly, everything. That means you're trusting God with every and all part and important details of your life. You have no secrets from God. Oh, you may have secrets from your family. You may have secrets from your friends, even your co-workers. But friends, God sees everything you do. He sees all. He made you. He knows you better than you know yourself. That's why God is in the character building business. Because he knows that you are a character that needs characters. He will bring tests to increase your faith. Test to increase your faith so that you can strengthen your faith in him, depend on him so that you can do what? Lean on him. Look at the text. Lean not unto thy own understanding. My friends, faith and trust is like a muscle. Miss Pat, 
every muscle needs exercise or it will get atrophy, become weak and useless. It's the same thing with your faith. If you're not exercising it, it's going to be weak. A faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. Your faith muscle gets stronger through the trials and tests that you go through. Now, if Miss Pat was here, I would tell her James 1, 2, and 4. That's her favorite verse. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into what? Various trials. Let me pause there. The word various means different. The word trials is plural. So you know the trials and tests that come your way are more than two. Verse 3 goes on to say, knowing that the testing on your face produces patience. But verse 4 is the critical part. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete. Pause right there before I go on to the thing again. You go through these trials so that God can perfect your faith. And once your faith is perfected, you are now complete. But let me be clear about it, my young friends going to high school, going to middle school, going to the next grade, moving on in life. This is where you go on and become perfected because that new level means it's a change. So now your faith has to increase with the change. Just like your pants size, your waist size, your shoe size, everything grows as you grow. So must your faith. Like a weightlifter, you have to work out your faith. Paul told the Philippians, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. Work out your faith with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in both you to do and do his will for his what? His good pleasure. Here's the part that we really have an issue with. Self-denial. Denial. Here comes the part we don't like to do. Deny ourselves. You see, Ms. Carol, we act like we know everything. You see, Nancy, we are just fools in the eyes of God. When we lean on our own wisdom and not God's wisdom, we fail every time. I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure some of you may agree with me. When you lean on and did things your own way and not God's way, it failed. Either I made a mess of it, it got messier, uglier, and just totally messed up badly. Got myself in a situation so bad that I couldn't get out of it. The Bible is full of examples of those things where people did what they wanted to do and trusted in their own wisdom. Samson with a young lady named Delilah. David with Bathsheba. Peter with his denials. And some guy named Judas with 30 pieces of silver. Every time man leans on his own understanding it always ends up in disaster and is never successful trust me on that but when we trust in Jesus when we trust in the Lord it will always be successful the hard part about this verse oh hold on the hard part about this verse look at the text again is leaning on our own understanding it says not to but what do we do we lean on our own understanding you see, don't miss this, my friends. Don't lean on what you think is right. Lean on the Lord who is always right. Come on, give God some glory right there. You see, our ways are not his ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. When we think we know more than God, God has a way of putting us back in our place. We think we're doing good until we crash and burn. Then only and then, only then do we realize we were never in charge at all. The word I'm looking for here is humility. Be humble. If you are humble, you can't stumble. Why? Because you're close to God. How do I know you're close to God? You're getting low to the ground when you're humble. And when you're humble, you can't stumble. Why? Because if you're low to the ground, you can't stumble because you're not walking. But you're always looking up. You're always focusing on the Lord. Jesus is able to keep you from falling and stumbling, from tripping up, from making bad decisions, from choices that ruin your life. Jesus is able to present you and me faultless before exceeding presence of joy of our Lord. 
You have to be humble. That means denying your selfish desire to always be right when you're wrong. Tear down. Tear down that altar that you built and dedicated to yourself. And kneel before the Lord your God, our maker. Look at the text again, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. How do you trust the Lord with all your heart? How do you do that? How do you do it? How do you turn over control over your life to Jesus? How do we give it to him? Let me just share this with somebody here who may not know it. He's already in charge if you didn't know, by the way. How do you do this? First, you trust the Lord with your family. That's that all. Trust the Lord with your friends, your finances, your tithing, your offering, your generous giving. Trust the Lord over your job. Trust the Lord with your physical health, your mental health. Trust the Lord with today's problems and tomorrow's problems. Trust the Lord with the safety of your family, your nation, your country. Trust the Lord over your politics. Just remember God is in charge, not man. Remember the Lord is still on the throne and the last time I checked, he'll be there till what? When he stands up, Richard. When he stands up. Till kingdom come, thy will be done. Verse 5 says again, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Can you understand, let me say it like this, can your understanding fix any of the things I just listed? Can your wisdom fix it? You better trust. You better lean on. You better depend on say a sweet name with me. Somebody say Jesus. Only Jesus can fix it. Only Jesus can work it out. He works everything to your favor. Let me just give you this real quick. You've got to trust him. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, You and me both know how dependable the Lord is. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are safe. Which leads me to my second point. When you really trust in the Lord, you stop rationalizing. You stop rationalizing with man's nonsense and start using your God sense. Stop rationalizing with man's sense. And start using your God sense. Verse 5 again. I'll, I'll keep it up there. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and look not unto thine own understanding. The word rationalize means the following. An attempt to explain or justify a person's or another person's behavior or attitude or actions with logical, plausible reasons, even if those are not true or appropriate. Hmm. Think about that for a second. For example, spending all my paycheck at the racetrack, betting on my favorite horse, it's a three-legged horse, named Make Me Glue. And Make Me Glue is in the third race at 100 to 1. Wait and see how happy my wife is when that horse wins. It's not going to happen. Brothers and sisters, we try so hard to justify bad ideas as good ones because we fail to realize they are just foolish. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. Whatever we lean on and depend on our understanding or our wisdom, again, I'm going to say it again, it will fail. That's why the devil wants you and me to love the things of this world more than we love the Lord. He wants you to put your trust and faith in your money, your titles, your education. He wants you to put your, your trust in the wisdom of the world, how the world thinks. That's man's sense. James 4.4 4 tells us, not to be friends with the world. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Let's just pause for a second and ask ourselves this question internally. Do I want to be God's enemy? And do you think you'll win in a fight with God? Brothers and sisters, let me be clear. You have a better chance of winning with that three-legged horse than beating God. 
I'm look at the text again. Go ahead, pop it up again. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Man's sense says that anything I think on my own wisdom will work. The Bible is full of examples of that, of men who trusted in their own wisdom. Eve listened to the devil, and Adam didn't put his foot down, and they all got kicked out of the garden. Abe listened to his wife and said, look at that baby with Hagar. It's all good. You see how well that worked. Nothing but baby mama drama. Jacob listened to his mother lying to his father, and his brother ended up wanting to kill him. Aaron listened to the people and made an idol, and God killed all those idol worshiping people. You, the believer, or you, the unbeliever, thinking you don't need Jesus and you can what? Save yourself. Keep listening to the lies of the devil. You and him both will be in a barbecue in hell. But when you use God's sense, hear me now, when you use God's sense, you trust in God's word. You believe in God's word. You believe that God is faithful to you. You believe that he's faithful and just, that he loves you in spite of yourself being a wretch undone. Because we are what? His children. We are his people. We have his love, his protection, his provision. He provides everything we need and we trust in the Lord. We truly must believe in our heart. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. That's trusting in the Lord. When we lean on and trust in God, God sends, look at the text, look at what happens when you do that. When you, when you lean on God and trust him. Abraham again, a broken down old man, and Sarah, an infertile woman, make a baby. Rahab, a prostitute, trusts in God. But this is how wonderful God is. He uses her as an example of faith. She's in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11. We call that the Hall of Fame of Faith. And she's in the line of Jesus. Jesus trusts in his father. His God's will be done. In three times in the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane, he's asking the Lord to take this way, take this away, take this away. But each time he ended that request, thy will be done. He went to the cross. What makes sense to God makes no sense to us. Why? Because it's our foolish wisdom. God said, take my son, kill him for the sins of the world. Make sense to anyone? Of course not. But it's God's sense. Let me put some Bible to that. Isaiah 55, 8, 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than yours. Let me just be clear about one thing. Anybody glad that God's ways aren't our ways? Because if he didn't think about being sacrificial, if he didn't think about being loving, if his ways were our ways, we all would be in a burning hell. Jesus for the cross. We got to thank Jesus for his blood. We got to thank Jesus for his love that saved the world. Come on, give God some glory right now. Give God some glory right now. Come on, come on. Give God some glory right now. I'm wrapping this up. We're heading out. Let's review my first point. Oh, wait, go, go to that last slide. Go to that last slide. This is what happens when you trust in man's sense. That's man's sense. That's, those two guys represent the world. That's you trusting in the world. See how the world lets you down? The world just lets you down every time. When you trust in the world, you will, it will fail you every time. Every time. Go ahead and let's review. Let's review. My first point. When you really trust the Lord, you have a relationship with Him. It's seen in your dedication to Him and your self-denial for Him. My second point. When you really trust the Lord, you start rationalizing with man's nonsense and start using your God sense. But last, my third and final point. When you really... Really, 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 really trust the Lord. You start recognizing it's not anything you've done, but give all credit to God and he'll set your course. When you really, really, really trust, I mean, really trust the Lord, you start recognizing it's nothing you've done, but give all credit to God and he'll set your course. When we look at the verse 6, it says simply, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. When you've lived long enough, 
you start to look back over your life. And when you look back over your life, you see God's hand, God's fingerprints on the situations, the circumstances, the times that if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here. Let that marinate with somebody who's been to the doctor and been told they have cancer. They've been told to the, by the doctor that you need an operation and it, it might not be successful. Let, let, let this marinate with somebody who is waiting on the test results. You see, when you start to look back over your life and see God's hand, his fingerprints on the situation and circumstances that if it wasn't for the Lord, I would not be here. Come on, give God some glory right now. Let him know how thankful you are. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's recognizing. You are recognizing. You're starting to acknowledge and know that God is in control over your life. And again, you think you're in charge, but you're not. When you start to have a relationship with them, you start to rationalize that it's only been God's grace and mercy that got you thus far. And then you will recognize that it is by his power and his might that he's able to save you and me to the uttermost. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the precious blood of the Lamb, we are all here today. True wisdom, my friends, is recognizing Jesus as your Savior. Get some God sense and stop playing around with this nonsense because mankind's foolishness is thinking that we've created ourselves, that we're in charge, that we're in control of everything. You may remember this. A few months ago in the springtime, there was a full eclipse. The moon blocked out the light from the sun. Who do you think put the moon in the sky to do such a miraculous thing? God did it. We need to start giving credit where credit is due. Geraldine, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. There will come a day when every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And when that day comes, everyone living, everyone dead, everyone rich, everyone poor, everyone black, white, green, purple, yellow, will have to acknowledge Jesus as Lord. You're going to have to give credit where credit is due. So why not do it now? Because when you do that, you already know that you have a roof over your head, the clothes on your back, food on your table, reasonable health, reasonable mental faculties, you have sight. But most of all, we're not planning your funeral. Give God credit that he deserves. And when you do that, watch what God will do for your life. Look at the text again. He shall do what? Direct thy paths. God will plot the course of your life. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. When you trust the Lord, he will, look at the text, direct your paths. When your life is lined up and in God's hands, you trust him. You trust in him that he'll put you in the right place at the right time, point you in the right direction. It's God's directions and God's orders. It's God's highway and you don't even have to pay any tolls on it when you ride. You'll meet people, and this is the best part. I met Nancy all those years ago. You'll meet people and go places you never thought you would because you're in the service for the Lord. My life application for this is this. We have the playbook on how things work. It's called the Bible. For every example of faith, no faith, love, hate, every example you need is in the Bible. You need examples on trust, it's in the Bible. Betrayal, it's in the Bible. The one thing that is consistent is God's love for us. 1 Corinthians 13 says, his love never fails. That's why we should trust him. But as I close, Randy, you know Jesus. You know he's reliable, dependable, and capable. Deb, you see how Jesus has been sustainable, making a way out of no way in your life. But Margie, 
aren't you? You know how lovable Jesus is because he's been there for you in the hard times, in the dark times of life. That's why you praise him the way you do because you learn to lean on and depend on him. And you know that he never failed you. You see, here's the thing from, the, from, from 2 Timothy. It says, this is a faithful saying, for if we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, he shall also reign with him. And if we deny him, he'll deny us. But if we are faithless, he always remains faithful. He cannot deny himself, meaning we belong to him. So to deny us is to deny himself. And we know that God is not a liar. God will always keep his word. How do I know he always keeps his word? Because I'll give you 66 reasons why he keeps his word. And if you look very closely at every book, you'll see thousands of times over and over again why he loves us. He's forgiven us 77 times 7. Probably another 77 times a million times over. But let me do the following. Look at that cross. That's why I really trust the Lord. But how about you? Do you really, do you really trust him? Do you? Do you really trust him? Do me a favor, Mary. Go ahead and hit that slide. That's us struggling. That's every one of us struggling, trying to figure out how to do things on our own. When we try to do everything on our own, when we try to make and plan things on our own, that's the struggle we go through. You can't make it without Jesus. If you try, that's how you think you might be successful. Oh, don't, 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 don't doubt it. That's how you'll be if you try to live this life without Jesus. You're going to try to get out of a situation, think you out of it, and you're still struggling with it. This visual metaphor is there for you to think about the times in your life when you've done it on your own. That's how it looked. That's how it looked. Children, lean and depend on Jesus. Not your own wisdom. Listen to your parents. Friends, share with other people who don't know Jesus because their life is like that right now. Their life is like that. It's a struggle. 